me, I personally, I grew up in a broken home where I often saw physical abuse and really emotional abuse. And so I didn't know how to communicate feelings. I often ran from them. I would hide in my closet and I grew up in that. So then I watched my brother take his pain and use it for alcohol, drugs, and I took my pain and used it with men. And I, of course, didn't know at 12 that I'm searching for love, I'm searching for somebody to kind of fill up that cup or to just be seen, to be heard by somebody. And so I take that into my teenage years of just kind of serial boyfriend dating and trying to find who I was all at the same time where kind of witnessing this manipulation and this physical abuse happening in my home and trying to figure out where I belong in all of that. And then I, my parents get divorced and I finally move out. I'm kind of homeless for a little while, living with my best friend at the time and then living with my cousin and finally buying my home. But in all of that, I was still searching to be seen, to be heard and to be loved. And I was definitely an emotional roller coaster girl. If you were up, I was up. And if you were down, I was down. And I started finding my identity in my body. It's when I started my fitness business and then it went into my business. And so I had my idol into pretty much every area of my life. And Jessica, I just like thank you so much for your transparency because you're not alone. I feel like so many women and men can identify just when you're walking through trauma, going through certain things in life, going through the motions. There's certain actions and behaviors that we do that we don't want to do, but then we live them out in our lives. So what were some of the lies that because of the traumatic past and just your home environment growing up that you took on and you started believing? Mm -hmm. One of them was, well, if I didn't do it, then nobody was going to do it. And so I always had this self-dependence even after finding the Lord at 22. So I didn't grow up in the church and I found the Lord as my savior at 22. And even after that, it was really hard for me to understand a relationship with the Lord and allowing him to love me. But for me, that was probably one of the biggest lies to fight to be seen, to fight to be heard and to prove that I was worthy of somebody's attention or that I was smart enough. And so I kind of had this attitude of, well, if nobody is going to do it, then of course it has to be me. And did you, like, it's interesting just hearing, like, you didn't grow up in church, so this whole idea of, like, Heavenly Father, like, Abba God, was that really hard because of the family dynamics that you were growing up and living in? Yes. I called myself a cherry picker Christian, where I was like, I would tithe a little bit, the Christian checklist kind of thing. And it was like, I'd read one scripture, and then I'd be like, well, I probably should read maybe a whole chapter. And then I, I never wanted to touch the Old Testament for years. <laughs> And finally, I just started to realize that he's not some God that's far off, but that he is somebody that cares, that does care about me, that trusts me, and he's not a manipulator. So I can go to him with my feelings and I can be honest and transparent. He's not gonna use that against me or love as far as like reciprocation. He wants to give love and it's not about what I can do for him and what he can do for me. You know, one thing I really appreciate when going through your book is just how the word really, as you began to dive deeper into the word and read the word, it really started to do a deep work in your spirit and your soul. Can you just share about your experience and your encounter just with reading the word of God and how it just tra helped to transform you from the inside out? Yeah, I think for me it was we often try to change who we are by what we can do. Whether we can change our to-do list, we get really pretty markers and we try to fill it up and we try to change how we are on the outside. And for me, that's what I would do. I would change what I was working or maybe if I excelled in this area, then I would finally feel peace or I'd finally feel loved. And then I realized that the Lord works from the inside out. And then I realized when I just submitted and actually stopped blaming people for how I was feeling and what was going on and taking responsibility for my words, my actions, that's when the Lord was like, we have something to work with now. <laughs> Jessica, I heard you talk about the realization of the bitterness that was still in your heart and unforgiveness towards others. And I think so many people can relate to that because of the trauma that they've been through, the things that have happened. How did you practically start working on uprooting that bitterness to be able to be set free? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we're taught that forgiveness, when we forgive, it's to forgive everything. That what has happened makes it okay. And that's not forgiveness. Forgiveness takes one person and that's you and God. We are to forgive because he's forgiven us, but reconciliation is what takes two people, right? We, we both come together to agree that this is going to be restored. And so for me, when I realized that my healing wasn't dependent on somebody else seeing my pain or witnessing the fact that they hurt me, that's when I was able to actually start the process of, 
I can start walking through this and continue to pursue it because forgiveness is given but trust is earned and that's something else that we also have to differentiate between the two and that was very pivotal for me. Yeah.